Hi there, I'm Eddie Matthews from the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce and Dr. Sean Blaine has been a, a real good voice of reason during this COVID crisis and he's been able to, to put things into proper context for us and he joins us today to help us understand the latest circuit breaker and good to see you Dr. Blaine. Good to see you Eddie, thank you very much. So, so we, we've we've hit this latest speed bump uh, yeah. and and uh, the majority of people you know so many of us are vaccinated and have gotten a booster i guess the main question people are asking is are we ever going to get ahead of this virus and why if so many have had at least one vaccination are we still uh, still in this situation well it's a, it's it's almost a, a different organism we're dealing with now right so the the degree of uh, mutation that the omicron variant has gone through allows it to be that much more transmissible it's uh, highly, highly infectious. And uh, I mean, we've always known that vaccination wouldn't necessarily prevent you getting an infection, but what it would do was prevent against the most serious illness. And this is still proving to be the case. So uh, even though in general, the Omicron um, type of infection is considered milder, uh, we're seeing this current surge just because of the sheer numbers of people who are getting infected. So it's virtually just an explosion of infections. And um, uh, because of that, it, you know, even though, you know, there's less people who percentage wise would end up being sick enough to go into hospital or ICU, just because of the numbers, there's that many more that are that are showing up. Um, and you're right. I mean, we have a, a, a very large majority of the population who has at least one shot, a high percentage. We're, we're, we're leading really in the lead in the world in terms of full vaccination status, if you count that as, as two vaccines and, and growing numbers of people with three shots. But we are seeing, uh, you know, we are seeing this infection spread uh, just like wildfire. Now, when it comes to the circuit breaker, it's literally because of the human resources who can tend to sick people. And um, we are seeing already large increases in hospital admissions, and we are starting to see um, increases in uh, ICU admissions. And if you look at the people who are being admitted to hospital and being admitted to ICU, the numbers are very, very clear. The, 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 the people who are getting the sickest are, 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 are the, the people who have not been vaccinated are much more overrepresented in hospitalized patients and in ICU patients. So unfortunately, even though we, we may have 80% vaccination status, the, if you're in that 20% that's not protected, you're, you're, even though you're likely to be fine when you get an infection, just by sheer numbers, there's going to be that many more people getting getting sick. So yeah, you know, um, and I and I saw numbers today. There was a tweet from the HPHA. Seventy five team members were uh, were being yeah. affected or not being able to get in, close to a hundred percent capacity at yeah. area hospitals, and yeah. and there was a number that were in the ICU. Yeah, 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 and and it's it's uh, it's it's just a, a, a critical situation. So. Um, all of, you know, what's considered elective procedures have had to be put on hold. You know, we're having cancer surgeries that are being delayed or canceled. Uh, critical diagnostics are having to be put on hold. You've got personnel who are off sick or are contacts of people who are positive who have to isolate at least for five days, maybe longer. It's, it's a really uh, a critical um, uh, situation. So, mm -hmm. and the problem is our healthcare system, it, like so many so many um, industries is everything's just in time, right? So, you know, uh, the, the bed situation is such that we're, we're always at 95% capacity. And so if you have any kind of abnormality or surge of any kind of illness, it just knocks it right down. And that's yeah. what's happened. Yeah. And, and my fear, and I'm sure this is, is yours, is, is the healthcare workers and and many who are suffering even burnout at this particular time because yeah. they're probably working around the clock 
Yeah. No, there's, uh, I have a number of patients who are healthcare workers and I have, uh, I have seen the toll that it, that it takes, uh, particularly those who are working in the acute care settings in the hospitals and ICU, on the ward, uh, the nurses, the personal support workers. Honestly, it's a, it's a terrible toll. Um, they are working long hours. They're having to do extra shifts because their colleagues are sick. And uh, in, in many cases, the, the, the compassion is, uh, is, 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 you know, at the, at being pushed to the very limit, you know, and, um, and it's really, really tough too when, 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 you know, you're, 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 you're trying to help someone, uh, you know, to, to keep them alive. And uh, when a good number of those people that are, are critically ill, you know, it wasn't necessary for them to be that ill. It, it yeah. just was not necessary to be that that ill. And I, I put out a recent video where I likened, um, you know, the, the vaccination to, to a life jacket. You know, if you're, if you go overboard in rough seas and you're wearing a life jacket, you know, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to survive necessarily or that you, you're not going to get injured. But boy, you're, you're much, much less likely to drown if you're wearing a life jacket than if you're not. And unfortunately, we have large, large numbers of people who are struggling right now in rough, rough waters, and they've chosen not to wear a life jacket. And, yeah. uh, and I don't know. Two of, the do. videos I don't... You, two of the videos you've done, one was about everybody uh, ignoring red lights or stop signs, for that matter, too, and you put it perfectly well, into that situation. You know, and, and that one was, was uh, you know, we've agreed that that, uh, you know, you stop at a red light, that's just what you do, even if it's inconvenient, even if it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, crazy, crazy, because nobody's around, you still stop at the red light. And that's just a societal norm. And I think at some point, I don't know how long this is going to go on. But at, at some, I mean, the numbers, the numbers are the numbers. And I guess we just have to say, okay, well, are we going to keep accepting that this is a crisis? And that, uh, we allow this to happen, or or do we do we have to take further action? I don't know. It's not. It's a tough decision. It's yeah, well, and um, uh, there are so yeah. That, that's an interesting part. Is is can we beat this COVID, or will we learn to live with it? I guess or a combination of both. Sorry, I, I, you 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 um. I think with the internet signal blocked out there. I didn't oh, hear the question. Sorry. Can can we beat COVID, or uh -oh. will we have to learn to live with it? Oh, um, you know, uh, we're going to get out of this pandemic. The pandemic is going to end. There is no question. Uh, but I suspect COVID is going to be around as an illness. Um, and it will become, as we call it, an endemic illness. So it'll be probably like influenza, where, it, you know, it continues to be a burden on the system. A certain number of people will continue to be susceptible to it. Um, and, uh, but, but it's, it's, it, it will be so widespread that, uh, that it'll just become part of, part of the norm right now, though, it's, it's, it's really still a novel virus. The vast majority of people in, in North America have not been exposed to it. And so when they, when they, when they run into this virus, it's, uh, it's a brand new ball game for their, for their immune system. So. It's got to be frustrating. This is what drives me crazy. A, when we see the video of, of uh, what are they called? Uh, influencers that were uh, flying to Cancun from Montreal and they were having the party on the plane. Or we see football stadiums in the States that are packed, yet we have to cancel things like the World Junior Championships and, and threatening other sporting uh, activities. There are so many people that we're all sharing that frustration. You know, yeah, we're, just, yeah, yeah. we're trying to do our part, yet we see others that they're just mm -hmm. flaunting it, I guess. Well, I guess, and, and different jurisdictions in the world have very different tolerances for risk and for uh, for this type of thing. So uh, that's where we're very closely, uh, you know, culturally and our social media is, is very much tied to the United States. So we, we see what's happening south of the border. And uh, I mean, I haven't been traveling now for almost, uh, well, probably over three years. Uh, but people tell me if they're in Florida, you know, very few people are wearing masks in Florida. And yet, uh, you know, more and more people are dying in Florida. So I, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, right? Yeah. It's... Uh, it's, um, uh, you know, the, these are, we're going to be studying this pandemic from a, 
socio-behavioral perspective for many, many years to come, right? Yeah. Um, so if I had to, to leave you with one thought to share with your viewers today, what would that be? Um, we're going to get through this. Uh, I think we're going to see the, the later this year, things are going to are, are, are going to get back to, to some kind of new normal for the time being, though. Um, I, I, you know, really, it, it's it's best to to try to follow those those guidelines that are being uh, put forward. Um, I think it's going to be important that we we just be good to each other. We be patient to each other. We listen to each other. We be compassionate. And, um, and, uh, and, and we will get through this, wear, wear your mask, right? And uh, I think if you can get your hands on a, if you have to be in a setting where there's other people around, if you're going to a store, geez, wear, wear a good mask. I think the cloth masks are, are, are garbage now. You probably wanna wear uh, a much better three-ply mask or a KN95 mask. Uh, and and you, you don't wanna get COVID. I mean, uh, you know, we should not be, be trying to intentionally get it. Uh, it, 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 it will run its course. We're going to be okay. We're going to be okay. Well, let's hope so. Last time I saw you and Kirsten was on a beautiful evening down on the patio with the kids. And that seemed like an eternity ago. Yeah. Let's hope we can do that in a few months. Sean. Oh yeah. We'll, we'll get there. We'll get there this spring. Yeah. 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 Sean, I appreciate so. your time. Dr. Sean Blaine joining us. I'm Eddie Matthews from the Stratford and District Chamber of Commerce. Thank you.